So, this is the Roland SH2 from 1979. This is the oldest synth that I have, and it is part of the venerable SH family of analog synths from Roland. We have, essentially, the SH2 is the follow-up to the SH09. The numbers are super confusing, which was the follow-up to the SH1, which was derived from the System 700 modular synth the most crazy modular synth Roland ever made. And um, so it's one voice of that turned into a synthesizer, which is very, very cool. And of all of the synths I've ever had, this one has such an immediacy because there's no menu diving, there's nothing. Uh, it's laid out brilliantly. I'm very sad that further Roland synths didn't follow this exact layout because it's very easy to understand what you're doing here. And what you were hearing just now is not just the SH2, but actually a Kawhi K1. So 40 Thieves recommended we try running the Kawhi K1 from 1988 into the uh, input of the SH2, which is a super cool feature. So if I was to play anything on the K1 right now, you're not going to hear anything because we actually have to play a note. So the only time that you can hear it is when the amplifier opens to play a note. So it's a really cool feature. But of course, what we could also do is turn the oscillators off and move the VCA into hold mode. And now we can play the synth through like it's nothing. But we have to open the filter, of course, so we can actually hear the sound. <laughs> which is a super cool feature of this synthesizer. But for now, I'll put the VCA on envelope so that we can do kind of, you know, a basic uh, description of how this synth works. We'll turn the resonance off, maybe the volume down a bit, and open this up, and we'll start with just VCO1 and see what happens. So I'm going to do a little bit of, let's see, Put the audio to the gate in to trigger. Yes, well, we're going to get there as well as there's an envelope follower in the voltage controlled filter section. So that's really neat that we can actually um, control this from there. But I hadn't thought about running the uh, gate in to trigger the th uh, the thing. That's awesome, too. I didn't realize we could do that. So we'll, we'll mess around with some audio cables later, maybe. But let's start with just the synthesizer. Um, so one of the things that might not be obvious to people who've been watching this channel for a bit, most of the synths in this room are from the 80s. And by the 80s, most synthesizers had uh, presets. They had memory storage, which meant that you could make different sounds and save them. That wasn't possible in 1979, or it wasn't possible for a synth like this. Another thing is, is this synth has one voice as opposed to being polyphonic. What that means is, is that uh, you can play one note at a time with something like an SH2 versus most of the synths in this room are synths there you can play multiple notes at a time. There are advantages to both, um, but essentially this makes this synth uh, great for bass lines and leads, and there was a little more complexity you could get out of a synthesizer because to make a synth with all of these functions but with multiple voices would have been really expensive, a la the Jupiter 4, which I believe came out the same year. I'm going to turn the reverb down real quick just because that it was fun. Yo, yo, yo. <laughs> uh, happy birthday tip, $6.66. I really appreciate whoever is out there. Thank you guys very much. I am not sponsored by any companies, so your guys' direct support makes all the difference. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's listen to the different waveforms we have uh, on Voltage Controlled Oscillator 1. Let's make sure I've got this. You can hear that if the envelope is not up. That is one seriously Oh, Scum comedy with the $6.67 donation. Thank you very much, Gaetano. I appreciate you so much, my friend. How are you doing tonight? Oh, you're going to hear the synth kind of warbled in tune there for a second. Mm -hmm. 
so the sound of this synth is just great. I mean, immediately the feeling I have about this oscillator is it's just a beautiful sound and the way that it all comes together with the filter is great. So sawtooth on its own, not that interesting. One thing I wanted to notice is I tend to play portamento by triggering notes to the right, but I'm assuming the way this works is that, well, the way it works uh, is that the notes to the left cancel out the notes to the right. So if I play a note, if I play all sorts of shit, but I have this note held down, nothing happens, right? But if I do the opposite, I hold a note down here, Just a little thing to notice. Another thing is, is that you'll hear that this synth does not hold tune beautifully, but that is part of the joy of a voltage controlled synth is that fluctuations in the electricity cause those analog circuits to warm up and cool down and change. And so let's cover this real quick. We've got a sine wave, which is really interesting. I don't really see that that often in analog synths anyways. Kind of a little bit of a hint of triangle wave in there. You can hear a little bit of noise. We can get really deep bass sounds there. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes. Let's see, I wanna catch up with the chat real quick. What'd be the reason for that kind of feature? Uh, well, so the reason that you would wanna route something like the Kwai K1 into an SH2 is a uh, K1 has no filter at all, uh, but certainly not an analog one. So now you can actually route um, the sound of the K1 here into it and use it as a sound source, which is really neat. Uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, it is a very beefy sawtooth, very Atari 2600 land. That is deep though. You could get some really crazy uh, sub bass sounds with this. We've got a square wave, which would be, of course, like sort of that Game Boy sound. Great for flute type sounds as well. You'll notice that I need to put it into pulse width modulation mode, and now we have control over pulse width mod. And what that means is square wave goes up and then it comes down, right? Uh, equal amounts, and you can change that ratio so that it only goes up for a short amount of time and is down longer. And what that does, it'll kind of thin out the sound. Which is useful if you want to create certain kinds of reed sounds. So immediately everything sounds really good. And of course we can control pulse width mod with the LFO. So if I go ahead and increase this here, we can get really cool sounds by having the pulse width modulation move that. which is great. Anyways, uh, moving right along, VCO2, we have a second VCO here, and you can hear that we have essentially the same sounds. But we also have a noise source, which would be good for making breathy type sounds if you want to create some flutey type shit. Or you could also do a lot of drum sounds with this, like doing hi-hats and cymbals and things like that. So, um, yeah, it is. It really is a beautiful sound. But the important thing about this synth, so um, this synth came out in 79. In 82, Roland came out with a single VCO and sub uh, synthesizer called the SH-101, which became the most famous of the series, and they sold a shitload of them. But the advantage of this synth is we actually have two voltage-controlled oscillators, and the SH-101 only has one. And that's why I bought this one instead of a 101, is that we can begin to detune these. So here's this sawtooth on its own. I'm sorry, here's the sawtooth on its own. 
And now I'm going to bring in some of voltage controlled oscillator too. We can detune that to make it fatter. Of course, we also have a sub oscillator, which is a square wave. So a sub, a sub oscillator is a cheap way to add more thickness to a sound. I say cheap from a components perspective. They don't have to implement an entire um, oscillator. What they actually do is that every time the oscillator finishes a cycle, the sub oscillator goes up or down. It's all it does. And what that ends up creating is a square wave. So it's a square wave an octave down from VCO1. And we can get really deep in here. And so all of these together is an incredibly thick sound that was not possible with something like an SH-101. Hey, see you in the 80s. I haven't seen you in a while. How's it going? This was your very first synth? That's crazy. And it is the great mono synth of all time. How's it going, Shane? How are you doing, my friend? Welcome to the stream. We uh, so are immediately getting almost Alpha Juno levels of Hoover thickness on this sound. And we could tighten that up if we wanted, right? that up an octave, right? The further you detune it, the more that beating sound happens, so... Pretty nasty up there, I can turn it down. And we have portamento, so if we wanted to add a little bit more of that type of thing. That adds a slide up and down through the notes. Yes, it does do a really great PWM. Very Eurythmics sounds. I believe this was used by Eurythmics. And I definitely know it was used by Duran Duran, which is super, super cool. Um, yes, yes. So this is... Um, didn't know you had two tickets to the gun show. Boom, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and move it over to PWM so we can get that famous sound that uh, Sue in the 80s is talking about. Now we're getting real nasty now. All right, so again, we need to increase the rate, increase a little bit of pulse width mod, and then move it into LFO mode. Oh, fuck. That is so fucking awesome. power of that sound is pretty incredible isn't it uh really amazing sounds that you can create with this synth let's go ahead and move back to uh some sawtooth here Just to a pretty tight sawtooth sound. I might even try to tighten it up a little more. One thing that I don't, uh, on the point here, dub station, is it's actually difficult. Uh, the way they set up the synth, there's no way that I see, uh, obviously, to bring the range lower than 32 feet. We can't bring it down to 64, which would have been really nice to be able to take these uh, all the way down low. 
that's pretty low but there's a couple more notes we could have gone but of course the sub goes really low beyond the point of where it's useful so anyways back to this I mean, what, I should stop and just say for a second, um, the raw sound of these oscillators is so good. There's just some, something so juicy and delicious about them, right? Very bright, too, compared to most of the other poly synths in the room. Like, so comparing it to the poly six behind me, this synth has a lot of aggression and clarity to it, which I appreciate. Let's talk about the voltage controlled filter. So, real quick update on if anybody's new to synthesis the way synths work most of the time is we start with some voltage controlled oscillators or oscillators in general and they just make a sound in this case we're hearing this sound it's usually a kind of ugly sound because uh it's supposed to be full of harmonic content like and i like to say it's like a game boy sound you know and what we do is then, uh, in this case, we have two, so we can detune them, right? Right, which is really cool. But then we run that into a filter. So you're controlling the volumes here, just a mixer. We could listen to just VCO2, by the way. Right, but together. Then we run this into a filter, and what a filter most of the time does is it removes the high end. So I can do that just by bringing the cutoff frequency here down. We can bring it very far. Which is cool in and of itself, but what really gets cool is when we use the envelope to control that. So, for instance, if I started with the sound and brought the filter down quickly as I pressed the note. It sort of sounds like a pluck, for instance. So what we can do is actually use the envelope to do that. So by bringing the cutoff frequency all the way down, the envelope all the way up, meaning that the envelope controls that, we can use these controls to create a shape. And in this case, this will create kind of like a pluck sound. Let's add a little bit more. Right. Uh, let's do a little more. So you can hear that that's now bringing out the low, or I'm sorry, the high frequencies over time. So without the envelope, it's just the sound of it. But as we bring this down, you can hear that the high frequencies are removed. We make that really fast. Or you make it kind of slow. You really hear how that filter closes down, right? Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Favorite is a bass or lead synth. For me, Shane, I think this thing shines with both types of sounds. And again, the simplicity of the thing and the raw charisma of the components is just uh, stellar. So you already heard some pretty cool bass sounds. We'll get into some lead stuff. One thing I've noticed, I'm not sure if anyone else has, but when I use this synth, I prefer it raw rather than putting it through tons of effects yes and i do have some reverb on here as i always do just because it helps to make the sound a little bit uh more uh interesting and also you know some people say they want to hear the sound of the synth raw which i totally understand but i want to hear the sound of the synth with a little bit of how it'll actually sound in a mix because that's what matters uh that's my opinion on it i might change my mind at some point if enough people are like turn the fucking reverb off i will um so we have a little pluck sound. That is the D there for decay. Everybody loves the D. You can see that it takes a long time for it to fade in or it can be, or to, to bring the filter down. I agree with that. I mean, this synth does sound great just naked. 
let's add some resonance. So what the resonance does is just adds a peak to the filter uh, cutoff frequency. This would be a point where if I increase the range on these, or even separate them an octave, really beautiful type sound. Now, one thing you'll notice is that we, as we play up higher, the filter, of course, is cutting off those higher frequencies. So what we can add is a little bit of this keyboard control. And if we increase this fader, what it does is it opens the filter the higher the note you play. So right now, here's how this sounds. If I add it all the way, it's all the way open, but somewhere in between is probably good. That way those higher frequency notes still cut through, but you get the sound of the filter. Let's go up an octave higher. Now we need to open it a little more now. There we go, so we can really hear that rip. Just gorgeous sounding, right? I mean, I think very, very cool. Death by Media, welcome to the stream. The SH2 is Roland's best mono aside from a low note priority. It's a beefy, greasy beast. I have to agree. It sounds really, really great. And um, yeah, the low note priority is weird. I don't know why that uh, couldn't have been done differently. So you lose the presets versus the Juno 106. Why choose the SH2 over the Juno 106? Well, for one reason is it's cheaper. Um, there are advantages to the synth. So let's talk about uh, the sample and hold LFO. Uh, Michael, by the way, welcome to the stream. So we can use sample and hold to control the filter with or without the uh, envelope. So let me show you what that's like. If I make the envelope just kind of uh, boring, right, so it's not doing a whole lot, we can actually control that with uh, the different shapes on the modulator. We most of the time call modulators low frequency oscillators nowadays, but back in the day, they didn't really know what to call a lot of this shit. Um, it does look more immediate to use. Yeah, so here would be an example, sample and hold. Let's control the filter with the modulator. So that's this fader. So I'm gonna turn the keyboard tracking off and the filter all the way off. We'll start with a pretty dark sound. Maybe a little bit, just so it opens. It's very beautiful, just like that, right? Now, as we increase this, let's start with the sine wave so you guys can hear what it sounds like. You guys should be familiar with this sound. Kind of the dubstep sound, right? So what that's doing is at the rate that this knob, this little light here is flicking on and off, wop, 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 it is moving up and down like a sine wave, right? So if I make it really slow, you can hear that it's going like this. Let's try. Right, and you get the sort of vowel-y type sounds. But moving back up to where we were, and we can... What we could also do is control that with a square wave. So instead of it going up and down smoothly, it can move up and down jaggedly. Which, if we go really fast with it, we can sort of get the uh, this type of interesting sound. But to answer Michael's question, we also have random sample and hold. What that does is it's 
feeds noise through a circuit which basically grabs it at certain points so you get the sort of jaggedness of a square wave but it's more random so this is the kind of standout feature i would say of this synth let's see if we can get this to oh, i don't know why i'm not hearing it there Interesting. I don't know why I'm I'm having some issues with this actually. There we go. There you can hear it finally kicking in. get these incredible sci-fi type sounds hey hey brain palace welcome to the stream yes um yes it, it is also does have digitally controlled oscillators which are not inherently bad but they're not going to drift and be as um out of tune in a pleasing way as a voltage controlled oscillator synth um it does have more beef than an entire cattle ranch i agree these kind of R2-D2-esque sounds were created with Sample and Hold, I believe. Now, if we run, uh, let's say, noise through here, we can really play the filter. Anyways, just an interesting sort of thing that you couldn't do with another synth of this type. Sounds really, really beautiful. Um... <laughs> Love the Westminster front on the synth. Yeah, it's uh, definitely got a look to it. Uh, for one thing, you can see the difference. This synth actually came out with cream keys. Uh, everybody loves cream in it. Um, it came that out with cream keys. Yo, 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 bitch. Scott Slay. Thank you so much for the $20 donation. That's super cool. Oh, Scott, I appreciate that so much. Uh, thank you very much. That's very generous of you. I appreciate it, you guys, and all of your support goes directly to being able to do this every week. So every Wednesday at 9, we're here. I appreciate it very much, man. One thing I want to talk about, too, a, a great way that you guys can support the channel is actually by gifting memberships. So if you look in the chat next to the emojis, there should be a little dollar sign. If you click that, you can sign up as a member for five, $5 a month, which is always greatly appreciated. But what you could also do is you could gift memberships to someone. So if you let's say you're already a member. So what you could do is you hit that and then YouTube sort of automatically determines based off of like how much someone's interacting with the stream, um, who to gift the stuff to. So it's really cool. Um, here's another way to hear what sample and hold does. We're going to, instead of applying it to the filter, we are apply it to the pitch of the oscillator. So once again, if we do this with a sine wave, you'll hear like a vibrato, like an up and down. And they added a delay here. So this is very useful for vibratos because sometimes you want the note to start in tune, but then in the same way, like if you imagine playing a violin like Vulture Mom, when you play, you play kind of like straight, but then when you get on a note, you start to add vibrato afterwards, right? So you can hear that the beginning of the notes start with no vibrato, but then it comes in. 
and maybe I make that a little faster. Bring up the speed a bit. And you can get these sort of fluty type sounds uh, or violin-y type sounds. So for instance, we move this to noise and then we move to square. So we get that kind of hollow square sound. Maybe we'll hear something that sounds more like a flute now. Maybe we'll use the sign to get it really clear. And just a little bit of that VCO noise. I don't know. I mean, it's not really a flute. But it is very beautiful, so that's a very cool thing. Um, let's go ahead and so so that's one way you could use the vibrato, right? We kind of have more of a whistle, right? Is very beautiful though and uh, very expressive considering this key bed doesn't have velocity right um, moving along though why don't we make a badass bass line sound and I want to show another way you can use the LFO that maybe you haven't thought of before um, let's start with VCO one again open the filter all the way up you, you, you get a little bit of um, noise on there without even the, the uh, VCO2 I don't know, it might be from the external input. Yeah, you can hear that when the K1's plugged in, you get a little bit of noise from that. I love the sound of that sine wave, it's so good. But anyways, let's go back to 32 feet and the pulse width modulation, or we'll just do a, a square or a saw. We'll do a square, oh, I'm sorry, saw. We'll turn the delay all the way off uh, because we're going to use this in a second here. Let's bring in voltage control oscillator 2. And we'll set it to a sawtooth as well. And then we're going to detune it so that it goes from being really in tune. It sounds so thick even when it is in tune, but let's get it out of tune. Kind of like a drum and bass type of re space line starting point once we bring in the sub, of course. It's too out of tune. <laughs> sound even thicker if we were to use the square with the pulse width modulation but we want to save the modulator for something else that I want to show you in a second here so this again it would be impossible on something like an SH-101 because it only has the VCO-1 and a sub it doesn't have the second VCO so here's how it would sound if we had an SH-101 Which doesn't sound bad, by the way, right? You know, that's a cool baseline type sound. But when you add the extra wave in there, my secret, like to poke, uh, to tip my poker cards at you guys, uh, I'm trying to encourage you guys to buy these instead of SH-101s. great now what we can do is we can use the modulator here to affect the pitch which doesn't sound very good on its own right 
kind of cool, but wouldn't be that useful in a song. But by putting it into square wave mode, watch what can happen. We can, as we increase the modulation depth, we get higher and lower notes from the starting notes. So all the way off, it should just be the note we started with. But then as we move away, we start getting a note higher and a note lower. And we can take that all the way to an octave. It's very touchy, you have to be careful with these old sliders. But you can get these really great sounds. So this is again a really cool feature on this synth to be able to create these like synth poppy type baseline sounds uh, just using the modulator of the LFO. Um, thank you very much, Aquatic. Yeah, this is fun. That raw saw got Megalomaniac from KFDM playing in my head now. Yes, I love a good uh, industrial uh, EBM type baseline sound. So this would be a very I, I got big like Electro Clash vibes, like uh, Fisher Spooner Emerge type vibes, you know. <laughs> Bring the uh, cutoff down a bit just to make it even beefier. does uh victi mode one welcome to the stream yes this synth really does have incredible uh low end and that's what i love about it is you could really see yourself using a synth like this to do some pretty serious bass lines oh god and the, the filter is just so juicy uh i'm not sure what you mean by that it's got what is this like Two and a half octaves of keys um but we could also if we just listen to just the synth here we can go up five octaves in range and you can hear that it's it does not track uh, the the tuning is not super great. Uh, so if you have perfect pitch at home, I'm sorry. The synth probably has leaned in and out as, of tune as we've been going. I found that going low, I need to increase the tune. And then the higher you go up, you have to de uh, lower it a bit. Um, yeah, so five octaves here. I'm going to turn the modulation off one more time. Right. So you do have a really big range, and of course, if we were to go like super high with this and bring this in, we could get some pretty crazy... Wow, that's loud. Sorry about that. Really high stuff for leads. Another thing we could do that I wanted to try out real quick, just for fun, is space them two octaves apart. So here would be both of the uh, oscillators the same octave. Here's this one an octave up. 
And here's one two octaves up. You get that really shrill, almost like harmonic up there. Well, by using the envelope here, we can get a sound. That's almost more like a Rhodes piano because you have that little tine at the beginning. Bring the decay a little, make it tighter. Like that. You get these really uh, punchy, tight, fast articulation stuff so you can play. So we're almost getting like an organy sort of Rhodes piano type sound from this. And you've got that articulation there, which you lose a lot with a lot of synthesizers when you try to play like that. You know, it, it just doesn't work out so well. Um, let's see. Tom Craft Loneliness. The whole song does that for the bass. That's really cool. <laughs> We're in microtonal land. That's incredible. Hey, cheers to all of you wonderful scum out there. Uh, I appreciate you guys so much. Actually, I guess it's easier to... Uh, there's the beer. <laughs> Cheers, you guys. I really appreciate it. I hope you guys are having fun. What do you guys think about the synthesizer so far? I always love to hear your opinions. I'm trying to go through most of the features so you guys can understand it quickly. Um, but we're going to do some sound design stuff and all sorts of shit. So if you guys have anything you want me to show, please let me know. And I love you guys. So cheers. Mmm. <laughs> Yes, sir. Cheers, guys. Can I get some scum cheers in the chat? All right, so what have I covered yet? We can go negative with the envelope. Here's how this sounds. Nothing. <laughs> this sort of negative envelope thing is only really possible if you can go negative. Actually, very nice type of sound to it. I'm surprised it also has that sort of pretty roll-in sound despite being one of the earliest synths. So what's important about this synthesizer as compared to most of the synths of... Uh, all of the analog stuff I have from Roland in this room is it's of a previous era. So Roland was still making modular monsters at the time. For those of you guys who don't know, uh, this type of synth was really new to the game in 1978, I think is when the SH-1 came out or the SH-09. Um, this is a very small synth, kind of mini Moog-esque synth. But before this, most synthesizers were not pre-laid out. So what's happening is internally, the oscillators are running into a filter, aka there's a wire from the oscillators going to the filter. Maybe, I don't know, maybe they use like boards or some shit. I don't know, fucking shit. But that's wired to the filter, which is wired to the amplifier. And that's like the building blocks of a synthesizer. But when you have a modular synthesizer, all the wires can be rearranged and moved around. So it's almost like a, um, what do they call that? Nikki, what do they call that? When you've got, um, when you call the police or you call, I guess it's just back in the day, you would call and, and you'd be connected to a, 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 usually a woman. I'm not trying to be sexist here, but I'm just saying it's what it was back in the sexist days. You would call and the operator would plug you in somewhere, right? Well, that's kind of how a modular synth work. Patch panel. That sounds good. Um, yes, I believe we can do a headphone out to audio in. We can give that a shot. Um... Who said that? Dubstation, remind me to try that out. But anyways, switchboard operator. Thank you very much, Autumn. Um, the idea is, is that uh, a synth like this, 
was like pre-patched. That way it'd be easier to use and kind of like the most common way you would patch a synthesizer. So you lose flexibility, but what you do get is you get um, a lot of speed and the ability to really use this as an instrument on stage. You're not taking a System 700 on stage with you. Uh, I think Pink Floyd did, but otherwise no one is. Uh, this, though, anybody could take this with them on stage. And in fact, being able to use something like the Kawhi K1 and route it into the synth is really neat. So let's talk about that for a second. Right now, what we have is the synth and the um, envelope is being controlled by the gate and the trigger. We could also have it be controlled by the LFO, which is fascinating. We'll get to that maybe. Um, not that common of a feature. But what's more interesting here is we can use the VCA as a gate, which you could do on a Juno 106 or an SH 101 as well. And what that does is just when the note is on, the amplifier is open. Um, instead of using the envelope, right now the envelope is bringing volume out pretty quickly, which is why this is shorter sounding. If I move it to the gate, we'll see if you can hear the difference. Yeah, that's pretty obvious, actually, but sometimes it's not. Right? We can move it to hold mode. And what that does is it just means that the VCA is open. So this reminds me a lot of the ARP Odysseys, the only other synth that I've seen or I've had my hands on that's like that, where you can put it into like a drone mode. So let's do that real quick. I'm going to disable the envelope for the voltage controlled filter as well. Bring these all the way down because darkness is cool and play a low note and open the envelope here. And what we can do is of course use the uh, filter and now we have that note just droning on. that um this knob is a little sticky which is a little frustrating for doing it well it's deep oh fuck yo rip subwoofers oh yeah so it is analog and there's no stepping it's just the stickiness of that Slide. But what we can do actually is use the bender over here as a way to control that filter as well. But what I want to show first, actually, real quick, let's go back to maybe a more reasonable type sound here. What did I do wrong here? <laughs> Oh, it's negative. That's why <laughs> I forgot. I'm like, what am I doing wrong? So we can start with a sound like that. Um, let's check out something. So right now at approximately halfway here, I love how the scaling on these knobs is great because at the five mark five out of ten you get five white keys up on the uh keyboard so if i hit a c here and then a g five keys up or i could just hit the c and move the bender up so this makes doing lead type stuff a little bit better thing that you could use this for um i'm downloading the sh2 software from Roland cloud yeah so by the way roland does a software version of this now which is pretty cool because it's weird what roland does and doesn't cover i guess one day they'll probably cover everything but like for instance you can't get an alpha juno emulation out of roland to save your life here's another thing we could use this for so let's go back into baseline land
move the amplifier into gate. That sort of a thing. We can actually control the uh, filter with the bender. So by disabling the voltage control, so no pitch bend, right? But by increasing the filter amount, we can get really smooth uh, filter modulation. So let's go ahead and do something like that. Let's set these at about 50%. Get these really talky type sounds. We get these sort of like old school um, scream or Koki and Benga type dubstep sounds from before it got shitty. Let a little portamento. Yeah, so you can get these really smooth uh, filter moves. Uh, what's another way we could do this? We could go up a, a couple of ranges here and go, you know, more beautiful type uh, sound to it. So it's a really great way to add expressiveness to the playing. And I love that you can actually do both at the same time, too. So uh, let's try to get... I have to tune it a bit, so I'm going to use my ear. There's a little sharp. There we go. So you can hear the filters opening as well as the pitch bending. Really cool. <laughs> uh, what did Wakeman use? Waxman use? I'm not sure, Scott. Oh, uh, yeah, there's definitely Vangelis vibes you could do here. So uh, let's go ahead and do maybe something kind of like that. I don't know. We need to tune it tighter. Let's go ahead and pull up a sound over here. String pad. Let's see. Plug that back in. Oh, I might be out of tea. Sorry, just had to tune that, so let's go ahead and try.
detune it a bit more. Yeah, so really cool that you could do that. Uh, what else do we have to talk about here? Um, we have Portamento. Which just adds a slide between the notes. I think we did some of this earlier. <laughs> Fuck the Blade Runner theme. It's ear cancer over and out. Trent, welcome to the stream. Sorry, it's a synth stream. You're going to hear it at some point. Portamento is cool. You get really long portamento. I don't know why you would want that much portamento, but it's there for you if you want. Here's another thing we could do. Let's move it into pulse width modulation. Let's move these to the same range. What we can do is move the tune range to wide and see if we can get like a fifth. These knobs are very small, so they're a little finicky. We can do a third. Kind of rave type sounds. That's also a way that we could fake chords, right? It's almost like using a chord mode because we can have that interval there. There we go. That's that sort of famous sound. Um, let's bring this down. Oh, that's dirty. I love you. Have a wonderful night, okay? Thanks for hanging out with us, as always. How fucking great is that? Talk about a cool, like, sort of, uh, you could do a sort of house-type bass line sound. I'm actually love that way that sounds. The pulse width modulation on this synth sounds impeccable. great sound. Hey, by the way, let's do this sound that you might have heard before.
Turn the volume down a bit. Kind of a famous little bass line sound. That you might remember from your goth days. Little Nitzer Ebb type sound. Uh, let's see if I get a little bit more. Yeah, something like that. That's another one of the sounds. So uh, we're, we've covered most of the functions here. Let's talk a little bit more about some other cool things you can do with it. But this would also be a great time for you guys to ask me any, any questions you might have. Um, if that's a thing you want to hear. Mm. If there's anything you'd like for me to demonstrate, if there's any type of sound you'd like me to make, it's always my favorite part. Sounds like the bass I heard from a Felix the House Cat song. Yes, this synth just reeks of Electro Clash, doesn't it? Love Felix the House Cat and that sort of sound. Uh, silver screen, shower scene, whatever that song was. Man, that song slapped back in the day. Um, mm, this beer is fucking nice. It really has a nice little mmm to it. Little Imperial Stout action. Let's see, what else is there to talk about? Well, one thing is. Like I said, this one came out in 1979. This is the first... So there's the Roland System 700, right? Big modular. They made the Roland SH-1 a couple of years before this. And it looks very similar, but it doesn't have the second VCO. Basically the same thing, though. Then the SH-09 came out the next year. Don't ask me what the fuck they were smoking to come up with that design. But they did. Uh, or that name. And then the SH-2 came out, and it's essentially an SH-09. Uh, and the SH-09, by the way, is almost identical to the SH-1. They just applied some cost-saving techniques to get the price below 100,000 yen, which might have been the first synth to do that. Um, then uh, this finally has the second VCO. And then we don't get another SH synth for three more years till you go to the SH-101 from 1982. And that's the one that has the same filter as a Juno 106. This has the same filter, probably, of a System 700. It's hard to say. There's some, it's hard to find online some of the info about this stuff. But I believe it's the same filter as a System 700. I'll correct it in the description if I got that wrong. Um, but the... SH-101 definitely has a Juno 106 filter in it, for better or worse. It's got a different sound. To me, I think the sound of this filter is just gorgeous. I'm not saying the Juno 106 isn't gorgeous or the SH-101 isn't gorgeous, but I love the way this one sounds. Um, and then when that one came out, the, the standout feature that it had was the sequencer, like the JX-3P, which we've done on this channel, where you can do and have it play back things. For me, I don't really use sequencers all that much. I like actually playing the keys. I'm still kind of old school like that. Um, mm. So the SH-101 loses the second voltage-controlled oscillator and then gives you the power of that, um, that 106 filter and a sequencer, but you lose the System 700 filter and the second voltage control oscillator. So considering I got this cheaper than a lot of SH-101s come from, and I got this from Music Sound Tokyo, I think they're called, Music Sound Japan. Does anybody know in the chat? Um, yeah, let's see. Can it do oscillator sync? No, it cannot. That is a major flaw that this synth has. It simply can't. Uh, do it. So oscillator sync, for those of you guys who don't know, is where you can control the start of the cycle of one oscillator with another one's pitch. It gets kind of weird, but it's a famous um, sound. The best example of it would be um, Robot Rock by Daft Punk uses that sound. 
Um, and then what, what's the song by the cars used a profit five that had oscillator sync. And that's a very famous, uh, sound as well. Um, let's see what else that switch on OSC one under the range and type knobs right underneath. Um, yes. Yeah, so what this lets you do, this is cool. I'm glad you brought that up actually. Let's go ahead and get a, a sawtooth sound going here. Oh, yeah. So see how we tune that to a fifth? What we could also do is bring this back to narrow tune and get this. Get it really tight. trying to come up with a sound that I like, kind of like a rough sort of uh, lead sound here. Kind of that Moog lead type sound. We can now control the bender and whether or not that affects VCO1. So bender on, both of the voltage controlled oscillators go up and then down as I move the bender. turn the filter modulation off just for the sake of this example but we could turn the bender off on voltage control oscillator one and we could actually create these um intervals between the two oscillators it's interesting it affects actually how this knob works so let's see if i can You can go from both oscillators playing the same note to a fifth or a fourth down. Lots of really cool sounds right there um that you could do what's up donny how's it going welcome to the stream yeah it's a really cool feature it feels like a boss battle from a game boy game right and just would be sick if you were leading over something, you know. Uh, let's go ahead and tune this to a third. That's a major third, by the way, not a minor third. Lots of house records were done using this type of thing. Very Tetris-y, Game Boy-y type sound as well that I'm a big fan. Yeah, what's new, Donnie? <laughs> uh, yeah, so really cool. That's a little thing I missed. Oh, here's another one, Auto Bend. Um, so you could use Portamento, right, to skew the notes. But another way you could do it is just using auto bend. So what that does is instead of moving between the notes, it just always slowly pulls up to the note.
I think. I don't know why it seems to only work all the way up there. It could be that this synth needs to be calibrated, of course. Very 70s type sound, right? There's a lot more features like that on 70s synths that sort of fell out of fashion and weren't used as much, right? Um, so what else is going on? I uh, lost my chat. Woo. All right. So let's talk about the fact that we could use the synth in a completely different way. So I am in love with this Kawaii K3 Roland SH2 combo because one thing you can do is open up the amplifier, right? And you'll just get a drone, a drone going, right? But that's useful if you want to route external audio in. So I'm going to turn the oscillator just all the way off and open the amplifier and uh, do something like this. And then we can go and play this polyphonic, completely digital, nothing analog about this, very low res. Uh, I love the sound of this digital synth, but, uh, you know, here it, here it is. Wow, that's loud. You can hear that if you force it in there, you can get a lot of distortion out of that filter. control over the filter and this is a good use of using the bender to get smooth filter uh movement so let's try this one And so what's so cool is that you can actually use these, of course, together like I did in the intro, but you could also just use this purely as like a... as a way to use an analog filter on a completely digital synth like the K1. Uh, excited to meet my girlfriend for the first time in person for New Year's. Oh my God, that's awesome. Well, congratulations. New Year's is a very special day and it's not that far away. So that's really exciting. Doesn't that just sound great? You know, get these just like really gorgeous analog textures, but starting with digital wavetable. So what we've effectively done is turn the Kawaii K1 into a paraphonic hybrid synth, which is super, super cool. And by the way, we can put it into envelope mode, right? And um, so now we're back. We can bring in a sound and create a sound. Let's make this just a little tighter so we can demonstrate this. Yeah, that's good. Um, we can now, every time, like, let's say I play chords underneath this, right, you don't hear anything. 
that is still going into the synth, but the amplifier isn't being triggered, so it's not letting sound through. But if as soon as I play a note, you know. Let's go up an octave. And I don't want this to be too much of an example of how cool the K1 sounds, but it is really great that you can route another synth into this guy. So I could see how you could use this for either bass lines or leads and then have something like a polyphonic digital synth underneath routed in so you get that hybrid filter sort of action to it, um, you know, and get this sort of. You know what I mean? Like, you can really kind of get that sort of sound. Yo, Crystal Love, welcome to the stream. I'm glad you're here. Welcome to the Scum Family. We do this every Wednesday at 9. How's your evening going? And of course, all of the Bender stuff still works. I, it's hard to do with two two fingers, but. You know, you could still do all of that sort of a thing. Um, awesome. Glad you're enjoying your night. Uh, hope it's night by you. thing about the k1 that i don't like is it's not easy to modify the velocity so it's pretty it's got a lot of velocity uh sensitivity It's a really cool way to interact with these two instruments I've never thought of doing before. Shoutouts to 40 Thieves. Appreciate you very much. Hey, thank you so much. It's so good to see you, CDU, in the 80s. I hope you have a wonderful night, okay? Thanks for hanging out with us. Go get some sleep. Turkey day tomorrow, absolutely. Um, yes, yes, yes. I've had a great week. I just turned 33, had a wonderful birthday. Got an airboat in the swamp that broke down. That was phenomenal. I was able to get this one for sub 1500. I usually try not to say too much about price. Uh, I'll give you my opinions on price, uh, but 
I try not to say too much about the specific price I paid for things because I don't want people to feel like if they sold this to me, uh, most of the synths I've bought, if not all of them, I've bought at sub market value. So I don't want to make anybody feel bad. You know what I mean? Um, but it's incredible. Music Sound Tokyo, I believe is the name of the company. I would love to buy more stuff from them. And by the way, this is a Japanese synth, which means you need a Japanese to US voltage converter. 30 bucks on Amazon. Don't be afraid to buy Japanese synths. It's a really cool thing. Yeah, sub-1500 is great. Thank you very much, Crystal Love. Cheers to you guys out there. Um, let's see. I think I've demonstrated all the main features. I'm sure there's some other stuff we could do with it. Um, we'll chat around a bit. Oh. Uh, Dubstation was talking about running the, uh, running the external output in. Whoa fuck this up <laughs> so let's see if we can do that let's instead of running the external out from the uh from the k1 let's route the synth back into itself and see if we can get it to the, do that moog thing so this is kind of like an interesting idea uh let's not do that for a second let's set up a sound and then we'll do it right let's see that is deep. That is a lot of bass, though. So. Hey, by the way, you can do stuff like kick drums with this sort of a thing. Or disco toms. Pretty cool analog kick drum stuff. Anyways. Get like a really sick baseline sound. Like just really great analog baseline sound, right? Something like that. Sounds pretty good, right? Um, but what we really want to see is what happens when we route the headphone uh, out of the synth here into the input. Let's try that out real quick and see what happens. Uh, I've turned everything down because I'm afraid to overload it, but we should be able to get some pretty crazy distortion out of the filter, I'm guessing. Whoa. Did I do that wrong? <laughs> Why is it making that sound? Oh, maybe the... That is one seriously perverted bitch. <laughs> Yo! Happy belated birthday tip, $6.66. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, you guys. You're amazing. So I don't know what's going on here. Let's see. Uh, is the phone's input? I don't know. Whoa, shit. I don't know what's causing that. Oh, maybe I need to control the volume here. So 
So without a, a without it. Right, we have that sound, but let's turn this way down. That like filter is really powerful. I don't know what is causing that. Let's try just sawtooths. Why? <laughs> I don't understand what's happening right now. It's just crazy. I do not understand what is happening right now. But I'm not mad at it. It's pretty dope. It's the only way to really overdrive that filter that aggressively. I don't know. That's pretty crazy, isn't it? So anyways, we can go back to routing this in from this synth. Here's another thing I wanted to show you guys while we're here. Um, right, sounds fine. Um, what we can also do is move the, we'll turn all the oscillators off, right, so, and put this in uh, so we can play keys. Let's go ahead and move to, uh, what is it, return home. We had the uh, creator of this patch actually comment in uh, after the stream when we did the Kawhi K1 video, which was really cool. This is what it sounds like when you squeeze a turtle. Since it sounds like it's been uh, <laughs> drinking too much. Hey, Juno6, welcome to the stream. Sorry, I missed you there. Got a SH2 last month. Well, welcome. I'm very, I love this synth. I just think it sounds amazing. Um, we're going to invent a new style tonight. So here's another thing you can do with this is let's bring the filter down. So uh, we'll add some resonance because that'll be fun. Right, get some, some of that. We move this into envelope follower mode. So instead of it being controlled by the envelope now it's listening to the audio coming in and it's very kind of sensitive so you can hear how it's reacting to the fluttering of the sound i wish there was a way to smooth it out if anybody knows So this is a way that we can actually use the filter without uh, touching the keys at all and have it sort of follow the sound. And of course, if we pick, uh, you know, a different type of sound like this 12 string guitar, we'll see what happens. I don't know. It's actually very beautiful. Right. 
and we could still use the LFO here. So like, say for instance, we want to bring a little bit of LFO in. I don't know why I'm not hearing that other than. Should be hearing that, right? Analog gear is so funny. Maybe because it's... No, it should be following it. So this is a way that you could get sort of interesting, uh, like a way to use uh, a, a, a digital keyboard through this to get that hybrid, you know, the, the digital, I love digital wavetables, but the filters suck and using an analog filter, you know, it sounds actually really good with this type of sound with the, um, you know, longer, more evolving wave station, E type stuff, D 50 type stuff. It struggles with it more. You hear it sort of freaking out. But when you use just these... Let's see what else we could do. I'm going back to the 12-string. That sounded really good. Like, to me, that sounds so much more beautiful than real quick. Let me just uh, turn these off and bring this all the way up so you can hear. Like, you really hear sort of the terrible digital artifacting, but by bringing this down and bringing the envelope follower up... Now all of a sudden you've got like a Prophet VS type sound. And of course, um, although this is paraphonic in the sense that it's not being triggered by note, right? You've only got one filter. Using the envelope follower really makes it feel like it's polyphonic in a way that's different than uh, other synths, right? Because... Because the harder you hit, the more notes you hit, the more the filter responds. What was it I was playing the other day? Something like that. Very, very beautiful type sounds that you can create with this synth. Um, all right. I think I have covered this synth pretty well. So I'm going to turn some music on unless anybody has anything they would like to, uh, do tonight. As far as sound design goes, I always like doing some sound design, especially at the end. If anybody has any requests, we'll do that. Otherwise we'll call it a night. Nothing wrong with that. I know a lot of you guys have Thanksgiving tomorrow with your family, but not everybody does. There's a lot of people out there in the world who don't have a family to go to tomorrow. And for, I've been there uh, several years where I don't have anybody. And, you know, luckily I've always been surrounded by great friends. So I have a good friends giving or something. But this can be a very lonely time of year for a lot of people. So I just want to say real quick, let's all do a cheers for everybody out there who's an oddball, who's scum, doesn't fit in. You're part of my family now. You're part of the scum family, and I appreciate you guys very much. Let's drink some alcohol, get fucked up, and have sex with bitches. Mm. I love bitches.
All right. Well, it's looking like we are done for the evening and nothing wrong with that. I love you guys very much. Uh, next week, we'll be back Wednesday at 9. We're always doing something with synths. I've got an idea for a stream. I'm not 100% sure what we're going to be doing. Yo, cheers to you, Crystal Love. Thank you for hanging out all night. Appreciate you guys. And um, so next week, we'll be, be we'll be back. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to do. Uh, it might be comparing the JP8000 to the MS2000B. Might also look at some plugins. I got a couple of ideas. So anyways, guys, Aquatic Borealis, good to see you again, my friend. Cheers to you guys. I hope you have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Love and light, bitches. I'm out.